Amen. I was telling you last night about the anointing. And because some of you have not been exposed to what we call the Holy Spirit revival, it started 1904, about 100 years now, in Azusa Street. And uh, William Seymour, he was a black man. And when the revival came, singing also came. And while the people were singing, a lot of miraculous things will be taking place. That's what, why you'll find that the churches that came out of the Pentecostal revival, they're singing churches. If you have been an Anglican, a Catholic, a Methodist, a Presbyterian, all that you'll sing, when you sing, is so dull that the children will be going to sleep. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. That's what I sang in the Anglican church for many years. I never woke up. And then I got to, you know, these white garment churches, they didn't have salvation. But they, you know, those people, uh, they can sing. And when they sing, their hands, I said, this is something. And then I got near them. I said, I wasn't born again. But, you know, just the singing. And I went to the drummers there. I said, how do you do this? Thing? Then they showed me. And I took the drum away from them. And I'm telling you, you think I'm singing now. When I begin to beat that drum, all the evil spirits in town <laughs> will come upon those people. And then, 1963, somebody invited me to a church. And I told him, please, you're inviting me to church. You come to my own church, Ladura Church. Well, where our white, well, our white outside, but black inside. And then, and when you know, I wear that thing like this. And I feel inspired. And I'm telling even at that time, I refused to have girlfriend. I refused to you know, do anything because I was in my class in the secondary school in the 50s. I was the spiritual man. If anybody had a dream, it's me they will come to, to come and interpret for them. Because they knew I was different. Girlfriend, no, because I said I wanted the spirit of God. I wanted the power of God. It's a long time. 1959, I fasted for three days. Because I was looking for the Holy Ghost. I wasn't even born again. And I was in the Eldora Church. In the White Garment Church. And uh, in this school, it was a school for an atheist. And that school for an atheist, he taught us there was no God. I said, no. I will show this man there is God. And I wasn't born again. And then I will run away from school. I will go to church to go and beat drum. And when they take attendance, because other people will go to town, they go to dance, they go to find women, they go to do prostitution. When they go like that, when I go, I go to church. And some of the people will go to church with me. After church, they will go for prostitution. I will come back straight. And when I come back, sometimes it's in the night. And all the idol worshippers, because there's a river between our school and, and the town. All the idol worshippers, they'll be worshipping the idols. And all the bad, bad people in town, you know, on the street, on the road, in the night. Because sometimes we finish 11, 30, 12 o'clock. Because I believed, I went to serve God. And God honored my foolishness and faith. And I will come back like this, wearing my white garment. And I put my candle in my hand. You know, we burn candle. And from the church, all through that river road to the town, that candle will be burning like this. And if the candle, hot candle, the one that dropping on my hand, I will never shake my hand. I believe that that was part of my sacrifice serving God. And one night I went out like that. And some other students went out. And when I came back, they said they called the role. The principal discovered those who are not in school. I said, not me. I went to serve God. And the following morning in the assembly, they called us together. And they said, all these students, they mentioned their names except my name. And they suspended them. And they said, they will come back from the suspension after when the exam was starting. And they came back. Those who failed, they dismissed them. And I still remained in that school. Because when I served God, even in my ignorance and sin and no salvation. I did it with all my heart. 
and the Lord knew. And so when this uh, person invited me, I said, come to our church. I said, you come to my church and see. But I followed him. And when I got there, they sang. Oh, I said, looks like this one is like, I, I thought, this is like our church. Because they too, they were singing. And then eventually I got the singing. I got the wordings of the song. 1964, the 5th of April, I gave my life to the Lord. Immediately, I began to learn real, real music. And I bought an organ. And I began to practice every day. And I sing and I play and I compose and I transpose. I do quite a lot of things in music. And it was um, 1973, 72, end of 72, that I went to Omahia. And those who are from Omahia, the Masters Vessels Group. And uh, they, they, those people too, they can sing. And then when I had the singing again, I said, wow, this is something. And it was there I began to hear about Charles G. Finney. I had some friends there. And then some Pentecostal things. And now I began to read. Really read now. And T.L. Osborne. And John G. Lake. And all these people. And I said, if I did all that when I was a sinner. Now that I came to the Lord. Then I pushed myself inside. I said, I'm going to swim in the river of the Spirit. It took me years. It took time. It took time. It took sacrifice. It took consecration. It took dedication. But one day great day I'd been saved and sanctified and then on the 23rd of October 1974 it was in Birmingham in England I'd been reading and because I'd been reading I'd read the book of a particular man and that book interested me and he was living in uh, Birmingham and I, I went for my postgraduate something, but I abandoned the postgraduate thing, and I went to Birmingham. And then I, I said, uh, I'm, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, and this one he said is very simple. And he said, how simple it is it? He said, look at Luke chapter 11. And then he said, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. And he that knocketh to him, that knocketh shall be opened. If ye be able, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall, they, shall your father, who is in heaven, give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? He said, then he asked me, who are the people he will give to them that ask him? What do you want to do now? You came from London to Birmingham. What do you want to do? I want to ask him. Will he give you? I said, I asked before. He said, answer my question. Then he told me, read that thing again. I read it again. Then he asked me a question, will he give you? I said, I've been praying for He said, read it again. And I read it again. Will he give you? Then it dawned on me. I said, yes. When I said yes, the spirit came. <laughs> we came here to worship God. And that's why we get what we get. It's not just to attend Congress. I've attended other conferences too. And you'll be surprised when I go to a conference and some of the people preaching there, because it's not a deeper life conference, and sometimes they even make some mistakes in their interpretation of the Bible. But when I get, once I'm going to a conference, I say, I'm going to get something. And some of you here, you don't understand coming for a conference. And that's why I'm deliberately doing some things. Sometimes I take time deliberately just to teach you and by practical example. I went to a particular conference and the people that were preaching there, all those people, sometimes they, 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 there was that conference, they took Isaiah chapter 6 and they tried to interpret from verse 1 to verse 8. While they were preaching and interpreting, in my mind I was saying, look at this message and look at this chapter. And I could have given them real, real expository study on that thing. But I said, here I am for a conference. I just listened to them. And then during the break, they said, if you need counseling, come to line up here. And then we'll appoint counselors for you. And think about general superintendent of Deeper Life Bible Church. And that time, the church in Lagos was about 7,000. And when they said, if you need counseling, I went to line up. The Nigerians who saw me there, I they said, Pastor, they were not deep alive. And then they were greeting me. I said, Thank you. I came here for conference. They wanted me to come. I said, No, I'm not counseling. I came for counseling myself. And those Nigerians were surprised. When I attend a conference, I attend a conference. 
if I don't want to attend, I don't attend. When I attend, I give my whole heart to it. Then they appointed somebody that would counsel me. And I sat down. And then, before counseling me, he wanted to know me. What do you do? Are you a pastor? Are you a traveling evangelist? I told him what I did. What was your background? I told him, mathematics. What did you do after you left university? I was lecturing. When did you become this and that? I told him. When, what did you start with? I said 15 people. How many are you now? I said about 7,000. He said, wait. Because they had given those counselors 30 minutes and they told them outside, they said, the counselor has 30 minutes for each person. And uh, so he went to tell them, I'm counseling somebody, it will take more than 30 minutes. Therefore, all the other people for me, let them go. And he gave me, I think, about two hours. And then he said, come back tomorrow. It so happened that the person who was counseling me was the one who started Coca-Cola in Atlanta, Georgia. And he was in the boardroom. And he planned how Coca-Cola will reach the whole world. And then he said, come the following day. And he told me the story of Coca-Cola. And he said, as I see you, you will do something with the gospel that Coca-Cola has done. And then, I've not finished. All the plants that they had in the Coca-Cola boardroom, he tabled everything down. And he applied it to the gospel. And I put all those things down. And then when I came back to Nigeria, I restructured things at that time. That's how deeper life has become like this. When you attend a conference, attend with your heart. Whatever we're doing here, let it be in your heart. Don't look like, you know, you're in the conference, you come to do your normal thing, you normally do at a general retreat. Because when I, God knows my heart, he knows my sincerity. And he knows that when I go to a place, I'm there with all my heart. I forget every other thing. And you are my children. I want you to be like me. That's why I'm running around, you know, at my age. And, you know, if you're not doing it well, I'll shake you up and say, why are you doing that? Does old man like trouble? <laughs> the reason I'm making all the trouble is that, you know, gray ears are coming. Okay, there's not just coming, they are there already. And I know that if Jesus tarries, I will leave. And somebody has to take over. And those of you that want to take over, I need to pass the fire into your heart before I go. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And, you know, some of you don't understand. If I'm singing and taking time, you're clapping in an irregular manner. As if, stop, stop, stop. What you have, keep to yourself. But want to rest. Why is the church going to move forward? We're moving forward. I said we're moving forward. Yeah.